Come smile, smile, smile. <laughs> It'll give you any time to prep. Mm -hmm. Um, so hi everyone. We are here in the Women Who Soar self-care speaker series. I just want to make sure that we're live in all the places. So hold tight. Here we are. Cool. We're holding. All right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I just, I love having guests and I love doing these speaker series. They're so much fun. Um, I have Trinetta here with me today and we're going to talk about the topic faith and your business. <sighs> I know. Just yeah. take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So how this came about, um, every month I have some type of speaker series and this was going to be like the wild card month. Mm -hmm. Then it ended up being three speakers that centered around self-care and self-advocacy. And I really think that faith in your business falls into that. Mm -hmm. falls into that. So um, that is what we're going to talk about today and why um, well, if, if you're joining what you can expect, like just to give you an idea of what you can expect is we're going to get a little bit vulnerable and we're going to talk mm -hmm. about our own personal stories as it relates to faith in our business. Mm -hmm. And I ask that everyone that does come in or watches later, that that's, that's what you can um, start thinking about for yourself as we're sharing our personal stories is how faith can relate, how faith is involved in your, in your business. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to talk about that, our personal stories, and then we're just going to go around, um, go go around. And, um, I'm going to ask Trina some just some questions specifically around how she how she works with her clients it, relative to to this topic. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and. You a quick intro. Trinetta, would you mind sharing who you are and what you do? And I still hear myself, so I'm gonna take off my my um Okay, I'm back. There you go, you're back. <laughs> I'm hearing myself, so I'm hoping not everybody else can hear me. If you are here, mm -hmm. And coming in live, if you can tell me if you can hear an echo, please let me know because I've been struggling with it for the last few minutes. So hopefully it goes away. Um, mm -hmm. But Trinetta, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what your background is, and what you do. Okay. Good morning, I think, or afternoon, depending on where you are. This, I am physically in Dallas, Texas, and it is still like 11 a.m. So we're still morning. A little bit, but y'all, my name is Trinetta Powell. I am a licensed professional counselor at, and a Brene Brown certified daring way facilitator and a mindset coach to women. I'm the founder of um, Trinetta Powell Consulting, where I offer, offer business coaching um, and consulting for other therapists who want to start their own practice or either grow to a group practice, which is um, the other company that I have called Reveal and Restore Counseling. Uh, we're completely virtual. Also under that consulting hat, I do my women's coaching under that hat where I focus on uh, women. I love women and seeing us win, um, particularly have a passion for women of color. Um, we're very high achieving, ambitious women who struggle with a mindset of perfectionism and people pleasing. And there's a lot of reasons why that happens, but helping them to silence that inner critic in their mind um, and be able to dismantle the perfectionism piece so they can embrace a life that is full of peace, where they can pursue purpose and do what God is calling them to do in this world. Um, so that's a little bit of what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you um, how did you get to a place where you how did you get to a place where you knew that this is what you wanted to do? How did you get to a place where you knew that it was like rooted in your purpose? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, to be honest, I originally didn't think I was going to be a 
a therapist. I did it. Um, I was on this road to be a registered nurse. I just knew I wanted to be a registered nurse. Um, I had an aunt who was a nurse and one who uh, went to this university called the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm originally from Alabama. I'm not a Texan. I'm a transplant like most of us here. Um, so I thought I was going to be a, a nurse. Went off to school to my dream school, UAB, all the things, right? And was pursuing this path to be a nurse. Um, a lot of things happened along that road. Um, I ended up being blessed. I was pregnant with my first and oldest son my junior year of college, right before I was about to apply for nursing school and had to do a transfer back home to uh, a different university, still great school. Got in, kept going, right? Pursuing this dream. And went through nursing school, did fine for the most part. I failed the class my third semester in because I was doing what college students do, pledging a sorority, right? Um, and being a single mama, right? <laughs> and going to school a lot. Mm -hmm. and. And faith was a big part of that process, too. Um, and so I reached the class, did fine. Next year come around, I'm pledging a new group of girls to come in. And I fail another class by one point. One point. And this class was, I only had one class left to take to graduate. This is how close I was to the finish line. And I taught the professors. And I'm like, what can I do? Can I just, I mean, can, we, can I retake something? Can I write a paper? Like, what? I mean, it's one point. I have one class left to graduate. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, nope. So because you failed two courses, they put you out of the program for a year. You would have to reapply. They may not accept you back in. Mm -hmm. And then I'm supposed to retain all of that information for a year? There's no way. Mm -hmm. No way I could do that. So I tried to go to different schools. Everybody wanted me to start over from the beginning. And I'm like, who, who wants to start over when I'm like one class from graduating? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't from lack of ability. I was just, I had too much on my plate. I was distracted. Yeah. So um, I cried and I cried and I cried and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? Like, I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to be a nurse. Like they make good money. It's a great career. Right. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, um, long story short, God reminded me of a comment that one of my clinical instructors said. She said, you're wonderful with your patients. You do a good job in a clinical setting, but you spend too much time in the room with them, talking with them. I was like, well, I like hearing their stories and giving them space to express themselves because they're going through a lot. And she was like, yeah, but you don't have time to do that and be a nurse. You have to move. So that clicked and I was like, hmm, I like people. I changed my major to sociology, graduated, did fine, and went on to pursue a degree in counseling because I wanted to hear people's stories mm -hmm. and help them get through the rough times. Mm -hmm. And that's where I felt more at peace mm -hmm. and where I had more purpose. So I know that was a long way around answering that question, <laughs> but I thought I was on a path to one thing. Mm -hmm. But God was like, no, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to do this other thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of how I fell into it. I come from a family of helping women. My grandmother, everybody can come in. My mom worked with Child Protective Services. So I was always around foster kids. And mm -hmm. we were just a, a serving type of family. So. And then how did, the, how did the coaching transpire? So how did you get fall into that? The coaching came about... Um, from just finding out that I was always the go-to person that people would come call, come talk to for the guidance and the direction of what they're doing with their career, or they were at this impasse. And through our conversations, I motivated them or encouraged them or inspired them in some way mm -hmm. to get to the next step and help them map out a plan to do it. Mm -hmm. And so once I was doing that repeatedly for several years, I was like, well, maybe this is something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and be paid to do it and not <laughs> just, I mean, I love doing it, um, but that's kind of how I fell into it. People just kept coming, well, not people, but women specifically just kept coming to me and saying, you know, I don't know what I want to do or mm -hmm. either I feel like I'm just overwhelmed and I'm not enjoying where I am in my life and I want something different. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and we, 
or together. And I help them map out a way to get over those humps. So tell us, tell us your story around, tell us your story and I'll tell mine too, around faith in your business. Oh gosh. Um, to be an entrepreneur, you have to have faith. Faith for me is, is very foundational in my business, um, in my organizational structure. Um, and I know everybody has different ideas of what faith is to them, whether it's their higher power, whatever they call it. Um, and I respect all those things. For me, it's God. And so God is the head of my business. Then it's me. I lean to him for direction on what I should do, what I should not do. I consult him um, on making decisions. Even when I made a decision to open my business, I talked to him about it. I'm like, well, Lord, what can I do? You know, I want to serve people. Um, at the time, my son was going through a lot of health issues, so we had a lot of medical bills, and my regular nine to five was not cutting it. And it's like, what, what can we do? And the idea came, we'll start your own practice. You can do it. Mm-hmm. You can do it. So it's very foundational for me. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I lean to, to hearing from God when things for direction. I look to God for peace when things are very over, overwhelming for me. Um, he my faith is just a part of the step everywhere, every, every step that I make in in my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can I tell you that something that I heard recently over this past weekend, Mm -hmm. oh, and it's been sitting with me is (laughs) I have some control issues. (laughs) I like to fix, manage, and control. And the more I can fix, manage, and control the things around me, mm-hmm. I think that that then I'll 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 get the I'll get what I want. Like the plan will, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So over the weekend, I heard someone say that picture picture yourself in a bus, and God's got driving the bus mm-hmm. and you keep coming up to the front of the bus saying, I I want to drive. I think I can drive it better. I think I can mm-hmm. drive it better. I want to mm-hmm. drive. And God says, get back in the bus, get back in the bus. And you're like, no, no, I really think I can drive this better. And no, no, mm-hmm. no. This, especially in this area, let me come and, and drive this bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you push mm-hmm. them out of the way, you drive the bus, and you end up in a ditch. Like that's just like correct. What happens if you continue to to try to push push them out of the way? Yes. And I find that that happens, especially with women entrepreneurs, so often, me included, that even though we know that we have faith. Even though we know our business is divinely inspired, even though we know, like, we still want to take control. We still want to to do that. And and so, how do we how do we really input like actionable input faith in our business so we can get out of the way and stop landing in the ditch? Yes. Um, yeah, we, we love control. The perfectionism piece, we think we can do do it better. Um, and, and we shoot ourselves in the foot <laughs> quite often um, thinking that way. It's like we believe that God can do it. Our faith, we're supposed to believe that this higher power is in control. But the surrendering piece is like, I don't know how to do that. And that is very uncomfortable for me. So I feel like the first thing we have to get comfortable with is being very vulnerable because the surrendering process requires vulnerability without and in the same breath that vulnerability is also an act of courage so to have the vulnerability and the courage to say lord i surrender to you and, and i'm giving this business to you and your will and i'm going to just be still for a minute so the first step is vulnerability which is going to produce courage in the process. It's scary, but it's what we have to do. And being still and listening. 
so we're just, we get so busy in our entrepreneurship world. So working with, with some of my clients who are actual CEOs and business owners, uh, working with them, they get so caught up in the lunch, the next thing, what's the product I need to make, what decision, who do I hire or do I not, what am I doing? And you get so submerged into the day-to-day -day operations of trying to grow and scale the business that you forget to just be still. You don't even know how to be still. You have no clue how to do it because you're just trying to get to, a lot of us, seven figures, we want it, right? We want, we want to see the M's in the account. Mm -hmm. But we have to pause. We have to pause and be still. Be still. And that looks different for everyone. Some, for some people, that's prayer. For some people, it's meditation. Some people, it's journaling. Um, just a combination of things. I also teach mindfulness. It's being present in the moment and not, I know we can multitask, but sometimes we don't need to. And learning how to just be still mm -hmm. and allow and to lean into God and allow him to speak to you because he can't. If he's, he's not going to compete with the thing, that's, that's what he's not going to do. He's not going to compete with you and your business coach and your, you need those things. You need your business coach. You need your mindset, mindset coach. You need your therapist. You need all those people. But he's not going to compete with them. Right. You're going to have to sit still and hear from him. And then you can take those things to your coach and, fill out, and figure out how do you build that out or create a life around that. Yeah. Can you just come um, live with me? <laughs> you know, remind me of these things, right? The, that's the interesting part is that we are such quick forgetters, right? So like, you know, every morning I get up and I like have all, all of my, I've had them for years, you know, all of my meditation books, all of my books, mm -hmm. and I sit down and I read them, mm -hmm. and I say my prayers, mm -hmm. and then I go about my day, mm -hmm. and a decision will have to will come up, or I have to make a decision, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's like, how often do we rely on our intuition, rely on, how often do we really surrender and rely on, is this decision going to be like self, self-will, or right. is this decision going to be inspired intuition, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have our brains, like we have our brains to make yeah. decisions, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you're, when you're running your business with faith leading it, mm -hmm. sometimes we make decisions that are just absurd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do. nevertheless, those are okay. Mm -hmm. Because we, it doesn't mean that we're not going to make wrong decisions or make mm -hmm. mistakes or have the failures in the launch. Mm -hmm. But when we know we're including faith, mm -hmm. we know we're including our mm -hmm. higher power, whatever we're calling it. Mm -hmm. it makes those absurd decisions a little bit less they're lighter and lighter right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're lighter and, and you you know with confidence even though we made this mistake that we our bounce back is quicker right we're not sitting in that space of the woe is me and, and if I would have done this or that or the other and and, you know, that inner critic, we tear ourselves down some. Mm -hmm. But when we have our faith, we lean towards it and know that, okay, I made the mistake. Here's the lesson. And I know I just need to take another step because I know with my faith that God will propel me for the next three. I love how you, you, you mentioned the first step is vulnerability, which I guess for some of us, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. You being, you know, with your Brene Brock, brown background certification me just like always wearing my heart on my sleeve where i i can be vulnerable with anyone but there's a lot of people that can't right that's yeah. so hard to let your guard mm -hmm. down so mm -hmm. the fences are so hard up there mm -hmm. but then the second step that surrender it's amazing to not be completely self-reliant like mm -hmm. oh take that pressure mm -hmm. off and really mm -hmm don't have to be completely self-reliant mm -hmm. but to so many of mm -hmm. us vulnerability is hard and mm -hmm. 
And just the word surrender is weak, right? Like reliance on something other than our ourselves, something bigger. But it's actually, I mean, I don't want, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that surrendering is not weak. It's, it's, it is a courageous thing to do, to, to surrender to something else. It's not a weak, it's not saying that I'm weak. It's just saying that I can't do this on my own. And it's too heavy to do it on my own. And it's wonderful to have this, of uh, this, 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 I don't, I don't want to call it a thing, but this, um, this resource, this tool, this, this thing that's a part of me that can help me get through whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So I think society makes us think that it's a weakness. That's the outside messages that mm -hmm. make us think. They make us think vulnerability is a weakness. That's one of the myths of vulnerability, mm -hmm. that it's, it's, a, it's a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's, it's a sign of being very, very strong and very courageous and brave. Mm -hmm. Where would people start? With, with vulnerability, like the first step is, okay, vulnerability. So like, what what does that look like for someone that doesn't normally get vulnerable? It's, it's a little bit different for everyone, but in the general sense of it, first lean into what this floor and what does vulnerability mean to you? How do you define it? And we kind of have to go back and look at where did those messages come from um, that that, that you were told about what vulnerability is. And then once we identify that, we have to start to challenge those thought processes of the negative thoughts that we have about vulnerability and remind ourselves, start telling ourselves, no, this is a courageous act. Mm -hmm. If I am vulnerable, it's going to yield me more connection mm -hmm. with the thing that I want, whether that's your purpose or if it's a relationship with the connection you want in that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to lead you to more joy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but the outcome is more positive um, connections and more joy. Mm -hmm. I like how you mentioned or you brought up society mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the relationship that those conditions, right? The mm -hmm lack of patience mm -hmm. we have to have things now mm -hmm. we have to do it on our own mm -hmm. we have to push through mm -hmm. empowered has taken on it a meaning that it's it's unrealistic, it's unrealistic right mm -hmm. and oh it just like um hurt like like you you feel like this all the time like you're always like this so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my my experience very much like yours. You know, I grew up um, with a, a mom, a single single parent mom. Mm -hmm. Was always taught that that um, that I could take care of myself, right? That we don't need anyone; we can take yep. care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I I uh, you know took the path, took a sabbatical, and ended up in twelve step recovery in in my mm -hmm. early twenties. And also single mom. Yes. And what I was so fortunate to end up in in 12-step recovery at such an early age because I immediately, when I got sober, I was handed the gift of, I was handed the gift of a higher power. I was handed the gift of yeah. surrender. I was forced yeah. to surrender. You know, I was, that was such a gift. I didn't know it was such a gift, but so it's, it's I've had this, this faith for years. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean that I still don't try to like get in there, like <laughs> yes. get in there because I don't have patience because mm -hmm. I think I can do it and I can do it better and I can just go get it done. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all those conditions from the, those early days, right? Those days. Yeah being told by my mom her intentions were so good mm -hmm. like, you can do this you can do mm -hmm. anything you mm -hmm. can do it and that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing to tell your daughter but however yeah. in addition 
it set me up to say, I can do it all, right? Mm -hmm. I can do it all. Mm -hmm. So I can breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like the moment that I say, okay, I don't have to do it all. There's actually something bigger than me that, that, that will carry me, right? That will carry me. Correct. Correct. <clears throat> When, if, if, if someone's seeking that, because I think that's the, that's the other piece, like mm -hmm. if someone's seeking that, like, I don't want to do it all anymore. I mm -hmm. want to surrender. I want to get vulnerable. Mm -hmm. if someone's seeking that and they haven't found it. Mm -hmm. Where do you, where'd you start with them? Um, I, that was that's a great segue. Um, I have a a program. It's a three day experience. I also do this as a VIP day. If it's a one on one, and it's called the um, Confidence in Uncertainty Experience because life is full of uncertainty every day, um, and we don't always know how to address and manage that with confidence. Um, and so, in that process, we would look at um, how do you get how do you get vulnerable? How do you how do you actually do it? How do you learn to surrender? How do you learn to um, be able to communicate what you need and actually get it mm -hmm. um, from, from those, whether it's um, from your business or from family or whoever, right? Um, and learning what your because a lot of that comes from like you were talking about the cultural messages, also with the societal messages of what we were taught growing up. Um, the whole, like you said, you can do anything you put your mind to, um, or with vulnerability, which you doing all the crying for, all those things. Because <laughs> right. I'm upset, that's why I'm crying. <laughs> but stop all that crying. That ain't nothing to cry over. Why are you crying? Those types of things we got, right? So going through the process of exploring those things first, um, and when we do that, when we try to go against the grain, we're worried about the perception that we are getting from other people. What are other people going to think if I go against the grain? What a, and so it stops us from actually getting what we want. So through the process, we we'll explore the vulnerability piece, where that comes from. We'll look at a perceptions piece. Uh, we'll look at um, how do we set up um, good boundaries for ourselves. So we don't get caught up into the, I got to do all the things and create pause. Mm -hmm. um, and boundary setting is huge. And a lot of this is, is the underbelly of it is shame. Mm. There's a lot of shame. If I don't show up, if I don't succeed, if I fail, all the, the up the back side in front of the coin, mm -hmm. there's shame all around that but when we are vulnerable and we can wrap words around those experiences by speaking and talking about it we mm -hmm. build shame resilience so through the experience we'll go through all those things and, and i'll teach you the four step model for shame resilience and you create your own plan of how specifically for you you can create a plan so you can be vulnerable so you can pursue purpose with confidence and show up in this world how god called you to do because we all have a purpose. Every given talent that we have, it came from the higher power. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. And it's not for us. It's to be given to the people and serve the people. But that does not mean that we have to burn ourselves out mm -hmm. and, and have compassion fatigue to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm seeing those, like some amens coming through. So... <laughs> Um, so I could talk with you all day, but everyone um, has like a time limit where usually they <laughs> take like 30 minutes and then they go somewhere else and do something else. So um, mm -hmm. you brought up and mentioned um, how how you serve women and how women mm -hmm. can work with you. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to just go through that on a high level, there's two different ways. So yeah. those two different ways would be great. And then mm -hmm. how can get in touch with you because, you know, like I work with so many women to like, you know, hit those income goals and let's build your lead gen plan and let's build your growth strategy and let's figure out your marketing. 
let's build this business, that organizational chart, right? And yeah. when I see women get stuck, they get stuck because of the stuff that's happening in their head, right? Yeah. And we all have that. So mm-hmm. if you're in that place, then what are you doing about it? Like we, mm-hmm. you can do as much growth and strategy and planning, but if your head stays stuck, it's that strategy lays flat. So right. I was literally telling a group yesterday, like who's in who's in your corner? You've got me in your corner. But who else is in your corner? Is <laughs> you got me? Is that is that in your corner? Is your mm-hmm. mind? in your corner is your therapist in your corner who who's there so share share with us um before we go all right so if you want to work with me which you should because i'm the bomb at getting your mind together um (laughs) if you come over here and you work with me we're not playing no games i'm gonna love on you hard but i'm gonna get you right (laughs) that's for sure i'm gonna use all of my not only just my skills and training with the Brene brown stuff and schooling and all the things, but just my life experiences too. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm very transparent and if it's relatable, I share because it's it's Mm -hmm. empowering when we share our stories. I told Mm -hmm. you when we share our stories, we wrap words around the shame and then the shame doesn't have power anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. So to work with me a couple ways, if you're in the state of Texas, I'm a therapist, so reveal and restore counseling. Mm -hmm. We can do some deep, deep work. Um, there if you want to see me there but um, for the grand team globally um, it's on the women's coaching side so that's trinettapowellconsulting.com and over there we have the confidence in uncertainty experience whether that's a three-day experience I do that in a group setting with a small group of women um, around about eight to ten um, and also, or a VIP day where we can do it on a one-to-one basis. And we do consulting because I like for you to talk with me and I talk to you to see what you're, what you're, where you're trying to go to make sure we're a good fit. And on the website, of course, we'll put the link in the um, comments, but it's trinettapowellconsulting.com. And there's a link there to schedule a one-on-one appointment with me. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, I am at Trinetta Powell on IG and the TikTok as the kids, well, the old people say, I guess we say the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, TikTok. Yeah. Right. Um, and on Facebook, I am at Black Christian Coach. And I released a book. It's called Confidence and Uncertainty, right? Um, how shifting your mindset transformed the way you live life, pursue purpose, and thrive in business. So yeah. if you want like a quick, short read um, on just getting to know who I am, it's on Amazon and it's at Barnes and Noble, either one. Did you um, email did you email the Hello Seven so you can get I it in your I could have, huh? Well, I just saw um I just saw someone else that got their um got their book like um highlighted in the newsletter. So I thought of you yeah. about that too. I was mentioning that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and I do have a free download too. I'll I'll send the link for it over to it's how to combat anxiety when you can't pray it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So some people just need something right now, real quick. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. So we, have, we need to add some stuff in 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 the um in the comments then and so website um, links the book in, in the comments gosh you're doing a lot <laughs> <laughs> yes but but i tell you what when you get when you take the time to pause and you listen to what god is calling you to do or your higher power you listen and you get the clarity that you need it's work, but you learn to pause. Yeah. And it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Not, but we have to, it's a practice. Uh-huh. It's not, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it's not something that is, it just happens. But if you don't know how to do it, mm-hmm. come on. Right. Let me show you how to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And even if you think you know how to do it, still go. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Because I think I know how. I, I mean, I think I know how, but I, I won't do it right until someone says here here do right. We have sometimes we have to be made to 
to do it. It's almost yeah. like we want to do it let the, let someone make you do it. And mm-hmm. and yes, I do have a lot on my plate. And for the folks who need to be made to do it, I, I know we're in the planning stages. We're trying to lock down a location. But if you have trouble with the rest thing, there's a retreat in Florida coming in in, in September. So if you, if you want that info when I release it in June, just send me mm-hmm. a DM. But if you need to be forced to do it, mm-hmm. you know, we create opportunities for that. Yeah, that's why I I I knew I had this, this mastermind launch coming up. And so literally, literally like right after this past weekend, mm-hmm. I, I signed up for a spiritual retreat. And I was like, maybe I should just stay home. You know, like that's what we do. Maybe I should just stay home and just rest. No, no, no. And I went to that. I, I went for the whole weekend and and did not take my laptop, did not take my phone and just spent the weekend with women and, and got, got refueled. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I did force myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get it. All right, guys. So this was wonderful. To, yeah. um, Tomorrow, I think we have no one. And then Thursday, we'll have Amy Lombardo. And Amy will be talking about um, self-advocacy versus self-care. Um, mm-hmm. Like the difference between like, oh, I'm, I'm doing self-care. I went and got my nails done. That's actually not self-care. It's, no. Right. So we're going to be talking about that topic on, on Thursday. This was so wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, women who soar that are are um, watching later are not live. Please um, hashtag replay so I know that you that you were here and with us. And if you have questions um, around mm-hmm. our topic, please toss them in the comments and we will respond. Um, and I'll let Trinetta know that there's some some questions out there. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is wonderful. Have a great day, everyone.